Hey guys, uh, hey, I'm just uh, with you guys today. I was um, up early on a Saturday morning and I was doing some research and checking out some things and I came across something really interesting and I want to say this. There's a lot of new technology coming out with cars right now and I don't know necessarily if that technology is here to stay. What I mean by that is that, you know, we had the seven speed dual auto clutch. We have Volvo coming out with the turbocharging, supercharging. Almost every car that we look at now is turbocharged. And I don't know if we're going to stay with this technology forever. I know that European uh, standards, as far as their, their EPA standards, are changing. So it's making them um, have to reduce engine liter sizes. Um, but what I'm talking about is you might want to start looking in the market for some used cars um, that are a few years old that would seem to have not the best technology that's out there. But in actuality, we're going back to it. I mean, you know... I'm still very astounded with my CLS, and I'll tell you honestly, for a while, I've been really worried about my transmission, about it not being the best transmission, and, and the only thing that would make me go out and get another car would be maybe something better. Have I really experienced it being terrible? No. I've seen a little lagginess, but I often think when I'm shifting with my paddle shifters, is it, and would I really be any quicker with a manual? Probably not. Dual clutch? Sure. But how much are you paying for it? So I'm getting to the point. Here's the point. Um... Uh, let me uh, flip the screen around. I'm going to show you something in the auto driver because I couldn't believe it, uh, or car driver when I saw it. I just uh, I just threw this thing on the car here, on the windshield. Uh, let's see if I can focus in. And I was looking through this new um, information on that. Come on, maybe I should stop moving. On the new Audi 2018 um, A7 and S5, and I looked right down here. And I saw 7-speed dual clutch, which already what they usually do, 8-speed automatic. And the way they separate this is through the A5 and the S5, meaning the slash here would mean that the S5 would get the 8-speed automatic. And if I come right over here, um, that's what it's talking about. It says that the, as you see right here, the, we'll start, 2018 2.0 is equipped with a 7-speed dual clutch transmission, which I thought was awesome and the best of the best. The S5 has a V6 using a conventional 7-speed automatic. What? Why would you go back with automatic? And it goes on to talk about that it would enjoy, you know, the manual options. And many uh, of you might, too, have not enough buyer. Oh, the manual option would have been great, sorry. But there wasn't enough buyers is what they're basically saying. So there's no point in financing doing that anymore. And then surprisingly, the S5 8-speed shifts don't feel... Uh, any slower or less aggressive than the dual clutch in the A5. So, what that's telling us is that maybe, for one thing, I'm going to go out there and being a Benz guy, I'm going to make the statement, Mercedes knew what they're talking about with the 7G, um, um, 7G Tronic transmission or the 7G Tronic Plus. Hold on, I'm going to flip it back around because it's just looking at the magazine. So, let, let's break down that 7G Tronic uh, transmission that's found in the Mercedes. Uh, again, I'm going to state this, Mercedes might have had it right or might have had a good idea when they were doing it. Um, what it does actually is it has a much smaller torque converter. So all automatic transmissions have torque converters. The problem with a lot of automatic transmissions is that torque converter is, is, is larger and from the point of view hitting the gas pedal and it pushing down the power, there's a delay. There's a delay in time frame where that, all the engines um, revving and RPMs have to make it to the wheels, which that fluid in the torque converter turns, produces a friction, then gives you the power. I, you know, that's the best way I can try to explain it. It's this, this, this cylinder turbine with, with fluid in it, and it, as it builds the pressure, it, makes it, it, it matches up the, the power from the engine uh, to the output shaft. Uh, to provide the car with power. With the 7G Tronic, it actually is a lot smaller. The torque converter is a lot smaller, which means that the turbine and the fluid takes less time to actually get the power to the output shaft, to the tires, uh, which is which is really nice. I've had a lot of automatic transmissions, and you get that bog. In this car, you don't get the bog like that, not at all. And in a lot of the, the 7G Tronics, you don't experience that much of a bog. Um, even though you do feel like you, you know, it's not a, uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily feel like a dual clutch. So it's not like spot on, bop, you know, you, you feel the gear, you have a little bit more time. 
but it's much better than automatic, normal automatic. Also, key feature too is the ability to uh, not sequentially shift or to skip gears. So if you're in a higher gear, let's say you're in sixth gear, and you're slowing down and you and you pull your your downshift paddle, your minus, the car if you're in fifth can actually actually go straight to third because you don't have to go to fourth. Third would be the best gear. If rev matched flares, awesome. So why is this so cool? I'll give you an example of a, a newer transmission in a BMW. I had a buddy with the 2012 BMW 335i X Drive. Um, very nice car. Um, didn't have the paddle shifters, just which I thought, come on, BMW, just throw the paddle shifters in there automatically. But had the uh, ability to uh, manually shift from the stick. Okay, that was an eight-speed transmission. So as I'm driving this on the back road, um, we're rolling through the gears because we're, we're building power. We're coming to corners, downshifting. I'm not, uh, admittedly, I'm not keeping the car um, at a very high rev constantly. I'm not. It's a newer car. I'm not going to try to tear my buddy's car. Um, so what would happen is every time I would approach a corner, you know, and I'm in a higher gear such as sixth gear, seventh gear, I would have to go, if, okay, I'm slowing down and bump it for each individual gear. So I'm in six, bump five, bump four, bump three, bump two. Blah, go around the corner as I'm coming out, then I bump up to go through each gear. I go up to about five again, then I got to go back to two again. I have to bump each gear, each time to go down a gear. What's nice in my Mercedes is that because it can, it, it doesn't have to shift sequentially, I when I come to that corner and I'm in fifth, I pull my paddle shifter one time and it goes directly down to third gear, then second gear. It, does, it skips fourth gear. It'll go from fourth to second, you know, depending on where it knows the technology that it has built in it, what gear to access. So that gives you access to, to power right then and there. Of course, you have to visually look and, 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 and understand what gear you're in, but it, it saves that extra action that you have to go through, which I think is a very, very nice quality 7G Tronic. Very, very good thing. So that's one thing that I would say uh, about that transmission, the automatic transmission. Yes, it is an automatic transmission, but it has a lot of technology built into it. So I'm gonna back that up with a little something. That I discovered just this week. So I have been doing a lot of shifting. I have the AMG package with the paddle shifters in my 08 um, CLS. Um, I've been doing a lot of the shifting in just regular comfort mode when it comes to the air suspension or the Sport 1. Okay. I can't verify this to any degree. I'm just saying maybe it's because I was starting to use it a lot more often. The computers uh, started picking up on my, my, my shifting patterns, made everything better. I don't know. It just feels different when I go to the Sport 2. Uh, when in Sport 2, um, especially my transition from second to first gear, and I'm talking about driving a lot slower, um, you know, with between, you know, 15 miles per hour or lower, you know, you have to be very careful with downshifting all the way to first gear. Uh, the car wouldn't blip. The transmission it would kunk, make this kunk and it and it would go there but it, it, it didn't feel like it felt very good as i use the transmission i mean it started shifting it would flare be it would it would it would, it would uh, time up it would sync up the revs perfectly make a very nice transition my upshifts were a lot better now keeping in mind in first gear shifting from first to second you literally have to hit the shifter at about 4,800 RPMs, if not before that, because the car is moving so fast. You hit it, and it's not going to still shift until you get to about, you know, six and a half, seven. I mean, it's it's violent. I mean, things are going a lot and very quickly for me. That's just me. Not saying I'm the best driver in the world. I know a few things, but the car is crazy. I mean, the car. It literally is. I cannot put my foot down on the gas right off the bat because it'll just eat up the tires, even in. Um, It'll eat up the tires even even um, with the traction control turned on. I leave the traction control on because I like the anti-skip, all the rest of it that comes with it. So I have to actually ease just a little bit off the light, then give it power, like a 5 five to 60 roll, and it's crazy. So I just want to state again to you guys that are looking at different cars, looking to spend you know a little bit of money. Let's say you got 18000 Let's say you got... 16 thou. I would definitely always get the CLS 550 if you're thinking about Mercedes instead of the CLS 500 because you get the additional 82 horsepower. 
Um, you get the seven speed. Uh, I think the CL the CLS 500 had the seven speed. I can't for sure, but you definitely get the seven speed transmission. Um, and you know, you get a few other updates here and there. Um, but I just wanted to put this together real quick because I'm just saying again, when I'm looking at it, and if you go back to the numbers that I kind of showed you, the brand new 2018 S5 is going to do a 0 16 in 4.7 seconds and run a quarter probably very comparable to uh, my CLS. That's a 54 5 car, you know, money wise. I, you might get a couple more, you know, additional nice technology features, I guess, but. You know, the CLS is, is running a 4.7, especially from 07 to well, 09, and running a 13.1, 13 flat quarter. I mean, for a little bit of money in the car, people look at it all the time and think it's still a brand new car. So, just want to put it out there, there may be a regression back in our technology, especially with Audis. They employ so many new things constantly with their cars that... When stuff breaks, I wonder in a few years that the real grease monkey guys that like to work on them, it's going to be hard finding parts and hard finding things in, in salvage yards doing anything because they keep changing so often. And, you know, I really think that some of these things, like the one thing I loved about the 7G Tronic is there's a lot of them out there. So if my transmission goes bad, I can find them in a lot of different cars, um, which is, is going to be awesome because, you know, if you don't plan on getting rid of your car, and you drive it hard, that might be something. And who knows, it may not even go bad. But at least I have that option. All the switching back and forth with Audi, all these different variations of the dual clutch. You know, some, some of these things you got to just pay attention to and be willing to accept it when you go into it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I just found some really interesting information out. Just wanted to share it, guys. Take care.